Well, good evening, church. It's good to be with you again today. Thank the Lord for uh, another beautiful day that he's given us, just for the rains that he's sent our way, just for health and strength, just for so many blessings. And I do ask you to be much in prayer for uh, all of our people. Pray for all of our sick. Pray for our nation. Pray for the church as, uh, as they're in um, search of the new pastor. Pray for uh, our VBS leaders as they prepare for uh, VBS in two weeks. Just a lot of things going on. So I ask you to, to pray for the uh, discipleship class that's meeting tonight. And the one that meets on Tuesday nights uh, virtually and the one on uh, Wednesday uh, on Wednesday morning. Pray for the ladies that have been and are traveling to Carson Springs to uh, uh, minister up there. So there's just a lot of things going on. Just ask you to pray for them. Pray for uh, wisdom as we open God's Word, that we would be able to, to read it and understand it as God would have us to. Uh, and tonight we'll be in continuing in the book of Malachi. And as I've started uh, studying through uh, Malachi, it's a uh, it's one of my favorite Old Testament books, uh, and I truly believe that we're living uh, a lot of the things in Malachi. We're doing, we're seeing so many of the things that that happened there that are happening today in our churches. And uh, you know, we were, they were warned, and we are being warned today. So, I ask you to, to just pray, pray uh, that uh, God would just. Uh, open our eyes, open our mouths, open our hearts to receive his word. And just uh, let's uh, let's pray together and then we'll get right on into the scripture and try not to keep you too long tonight. Father, as we come to you, we just want to praise you and thank you for loving us, for taking care of us, Father, for, Lord, for just being who you are, Lord, and, and realize that in this world that we live in, Lord, there's just seems like that there's so much distraction god so much destruction god so many things that, that are drawing people away and god there's so much anger in our nation lord uh, people rising up against people Lord, families being divided households being divided lord churches uh, being divided and and we realize lord that this is all uh, just the work of satan lord trying his best to divide trying his best to uh, to destroy and lord i know that lord you're able to overcome all these things lord and we just pray tonight lord through your grace your spirit your power god that we as your children that we would lord be led by you that we would hear you and god that we would be an example to those around us lord we love you praise you and thank you for all that you have done all you continue to do for all these things we'd ask in christ's name amen well you know last week as we started in the uh, book of malachi we were talking about uh, three things that Malachi really talks about. Uh, they, they talk about the defilement of the priesthood, the defilement of marriage through marrying foreigners and divorcing their Israelite wives, and the neglecting of the giving and the, uh, of tithes and offerings to God or giving polluted tithes and offerings. And as we, uh, this week, we're in um, chapter one. We're going to begin with verse six and Try to get down through verse 14. Don't know if we'll make it that far, but uh, just want to take our time and look at, at what God is saying to us. And, you know, last week, uh, like I said, as we read these things, uh, we God was warning and he was encouraging. And, and now we get into the verse 6. It says, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am father, where is my honor? And if I am master, where is my fear? Uh, says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests who despised my name, but you say, how have we despised your name? And, you know, as I was reading this, I was thinking about, you know, one of the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days upon this earth may be, uh, be long, which the Lord thy God has given you. You know, we are to, uh, in this land, you know, God has told us to honor them and, and to uh, do the right thing. And, and one of the things that was very important to the Israelites uh, was following the rules, the statutes, the, the the laws, but they were beginning to honor them with lip service more than with true, uh, with the truth as they were. And you know, God was saying His word, say through Malachi, said, "A son honors his father, and a servant his master." And if you think about it, 
here. Uh, you know, God is our Father. He was the Father of the Israelites. He is our Father through the adoption of the blood of Christ Jesus. You know, we're heirs and joint heirs, making us sons and daughters of Almighty God. You know, and we, and in so being, you know, we should honor God uh, as our Father. You know, we should honor Him and, and keep His commandments and follow His rules. And uh, and but in our world today, it seems like that. What's one of the things that you see on more TV and you see on more shows and you see what is glamorized and, and everything is children not honoring parents, children not uh, honoring their fathers. You know, it's uh, you look at what shows and, and what's one of the things the parents are usually made out to be, you know, inept, uh, un, you know, uh, stupid uh and the children are always made out to be the one that needs to be listened to, needs to be followed, needs to be taken care of. But the Word of God says a son should honor his father and a servant should honor his master. And he says, and if I, and he said, if I then am a father, where is my honor? You know, he's asking this question. He said, you're supposed to honor me, but where is my honor? He says, uh, if, uh, if uh, you're supposed to honor a master, uh, then and I'm a master. I'm Lord and master. And where is my, you know, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts. Oh, priests who despise my name, but you say, how have we despised your name? And and I was I was reading that. I was thinking, well, that's pretty hard words. You know, you come into a church and say, oh, the way you guys are conducting things, you you must just despise God. And that's what he was saying here. He was saying. He was talking to the leadership of the church and saying, you all dis are despising God. You all are doing things that are not just dishonoring, but, but are just downright showing disrespect and, and spite and hatred even. And, you know, we're to honor God. He says, you know, he makes this statement to the priest, and what do they do? They get indignant. They get indignant, you know, and they're thinking, how have we despised your name? You know, we're we're keeping our rituals. We're doing sacrifices. We're burning incense. We're making offerings. We're doing these things. And, you know, a lot of times today, I hear people that, that attend church on a real regular basis, uh, but they do it out of habit or they do it out of uh, what they're going to get. They do it out of so many other things and not understanding that, in reality, they're not honoring God. We're not honoring God. A lot of our churches today uh, are yeah, not doing the work that God has called us to do. Because when you get on down to the very next verse, the seventh verse, it says, By po offering polluted food upon my altar. But you say, How have we polluted you? By saying that the Lord's table may be despised. And you know, in our country right now, there's so many things going on. And, you know, the, this um, Supreme Court uh, ruling concerning abortion. And one of the things that has broken my heart so much, you know, and, and I wholeheartedly agree the fact that it, it should have been uh, overturned. I, you know, I, I applaud the Supreme Court. And, and some of y'all may, you know, send me hate mail or texts or whatever. But I, I believe it. Uh, it's the you know that we don't have the right to take life like that, but there's so many uh, over the last week. I have seen so many on Facebook, so many uh, uh, church members from our local community that profess to be church members out protesting and, and out being angry and all manners of things. Uh, and uh, we say, how have we polluted it? How have we polluted you? And he says, by doing things that are contrary to the commands of God, by not following what God has said that we're to do. You know, he was very explicit to them uh, in the Old Testament concerning offerings. If you look at Deuteronomy 15, 21, he says, if, uh, well, I'm going to read verse 8, and then I'm going to read uh, Deuteronomy 15, 21. Verse 8 says, when you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts. Deuteronomy 15.21 says, but if it has, he's talking about sacrifices, if it has any blemish, if it is lame or blind or has any serious blemish whatever, 
you shall not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. He, he, what's he saying there? Don't give me your secondhand stuff. Don't give me your leftover stuff and think you're doing some great and mighty thing. And, you know, you all know, that know me know that I love uh, J. Vernon McGee. And J. Vernon McGee talking about this, uh, and he made a comment. He said, it's just like us taking our secondhand clothing to, you know, the Goodwill store or to donating it to charity and wanting to get a tax write-off on it and everything and thinking, you know what, we've done some great thing. He said, now don't get me wrong, the secondhand stores, the charity stores, they need uh, your clothing. He says, but why are you really giving it? Because you're wanting to clean your closet. Uh, because you've got better. You've got things that, uh, that are nicer, things that you like more. You're not giving your best stuff. You're giving your cast-offs. Uh, and he says, and if you're giving your cast-offs, is that really uh, a sacrifice? You know, the offerings to God was to be a sacrificial offering, a sacrifice, something that meant something to us, something that cost us something. I, I think about the scripture where David came and wanted to make a sacrifice and, and and him being the king when he came to this man and he asked to buy uh, his an oxen and asked to buy this place to, and, and all the things to build an altar and to make a sacrifice and this man said no no you know you're the, you're my king and I'm going to give this to you and David says I refuse to give an offering to the Lord that costs me nothing he said, I'm, I'm not going to give something that doesn't cost me anything. You know, David, as king, could have gone in and said, I need this, 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 and it would have been given. This guy was willing to give it to him. But David said, a true offering cost me something. It cost me. In the church in the time of Malachi is doing a whole lot like a lot of us do today. We're giving God of our leftovers. We're giving God from our... You know, the, the things that we've already used, we've used them up. They're, they're no longer anything that we desire anymore, and we give to them. And he, uh, Malachi said, present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor? You know, and um, most of us, a lot of us, you know, we if you have a business or if you work, or even if you go to the grocery store and buy anything, what do you do? You pay taxes. Can you go in there and say, I really don't want to pay those taxes. Um, I, I think, you know, I'm I'm only want to give you X dollars instead of Y dollars. They're not going to say, oh, well, that's okay. That's okay. That's We, we understand. We're to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. We give the good offer. You know, in Luke tw chapter 20, Jesus was talking to them, and they were talking about the giving of the offerings. And Jesus told them, you know, because they were asking, is it lawful to, you know, to, to pay taxes? Is it lawful to do those things? Because they were trying to trip him up, trying to get him to say, you know, hold back from Caesar. And he told him, he said, render under Caesar that which is Caesar's, but unto God that which belongs to God. And when we become a child of God, what belongs to God? Everything that we have. Everything. Our life our money, our homes, our families, our talents, everything. And we're to render those things. Now, God doesn't say, write me your entire paycheck every week. You know, he's, uh, it, that's not what it's about. But it's about the willingness to say, Lord, whatever that I need to do to honor you, whatever I need to do to give to you, uh, to, to glorify you, to show how exalted you are, because what we do is we give by the exalting, uh, showing to the Lord. And we think about when Jesus was watching those give the, of their tithes and their great and mighty amounts, and they were walking up to the uh, offertory, and they were throwing in their large uh, amounts of, of money and wanting to make sure everybody saw it, wanting to make sure everybody knew what they were doing. And this poor little widow woman just threw in her two little pence, uh, which was pretty much all that she had. I mean, just one of them says it was like two little copper coins, which would equate to two of our pennies. And that's all. I mean, she gave of her uh, want, as the scripture says. She gave of her lack of material things. She still gave it all. Where these others gave just a small portion. 
Whereas, like the Pharisees, they said oftentimes the Pharisees, when they gave to the poor, one of the, uh, they'd go down on the street corners, and but they would have a trumpeter uh, sound a trumpet, uh, so that it would draw everybody's attention, and they would look and they would see, uh, and they would watch then as these Pharisees, these high-ranking people, were giving out money to the poor and doing these things. They wanted to make sure that they were seen. You know, it's just like if you hear somebody, you know, will make a large donation to build a building or fund a, uh, a scholarship or do something along those lines if their name is attached to it, if their family's name is attached to it, if, you know, they get all the tax benefits and everything. Now, I'm thankful that these things occur, uh, but that's not the heart we're supposed to have in doing that. You know, and God is uh, telling them, you're doing these things. He said, you've dishonored me because you're not doing it. Uh, for one, you're giving the lame. You're giving the blind. You're giving the things that, that might be about to die. Things that maybe the the old uh, you, uh, the old ram that was no longer of breeding age, that wasn't good for eating, that they're, you know, you're giving those things. And But then Malachi says, now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord of hosts? You know, we wonder why. Uh, and I hear people say, you know, why does God allow all these things to occur? That They were asking that then. They were saying, you know, why is, is you know, we're doing all this stuff. And Malachi, God was saying through Malachi, you know, you're, you're not being uh, honoring to God, but you expect God to be gracious to you. You know, we as a nation want God to you know, overshadow us and to to envelop us with his love and his mercy and to take care of our people and our families and to protect us from foreign enemies and, and all of these things. And the whole time we want to keep him at arm's length and we want him out of our schools and we want him out of our government and uh, we want him out of our, you know, private businesses. We, we want to choose the things out of God's word that are pleasing to us, that fit our desires, you know, the, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We want to choose those things. And then we expect God to, you know, gr be gracious to us, you know. And he's saying, would you expect God to, to be gracious when you treat him that way? You know, uh, there again, you go back to the government. You know, you abuse the government. You don't pay your taxes. Uh, government will come after you. You don't pay your tithe. You know, somebody at church, if they know about it, might talk about you if they knew about it. But thankfully, the way we do it, people don't really know about it. And I'm thankful because in reality, giving to the Lord, giving that tithe, that offering, that sacrificial gift to the Lord is between you and the Lord. Uh, it's not between you and the finance committee and the Lord. It's not between you and the deacons in the Lord. It's between you and the Lord. And because our God has... Uh, you know, the cattle of a thousand hills and the hills that walk on. He can provide our needs, and he does provide our needs uh, when we're obedient to him. But the difference is the blessings you miss, the the joy in serving the Lord that you miss, the, the, the peace in knowing that you have actually been obedient to the word of God. The children of Israel at this time, they were preparing to go into a very, very dark period. And why were they going into that? because they had polluted the church. We look in our country today, and you know, we've got some great churches, but we have also a lot of churches that have become polluted. Uh, we have a lot of them that have, you know, in our own denomination, there's been some terrible things happen over the years that are just now coming to the light. They have been swept under the rug, that have been hidden, that have been justified unjustly, uh, that have been trying to be covered and hid. And now that they're coming in the open, what's it doing? You know, it is bringing shame and dishonor uh, to the name of the Lord. He says in the 10th verse, Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. Now that, to me, would be something, it would be a terrible, terrible thing to, to hear from God. I mean, piney level, would, would you hate 
for to hear from God for him to say, I wish I wish somebody would just shut the doors, quit singing, quit doing all these things. He said, because I don't have any pleasure in what you're doing. We need to continue to do things for the right reasons because we want to bring honor and glory to the Lord. You know, it doesn't matter if anybody ever remembers me and my time at Piney Level. It doesn't matter if anybody knows who our deacons are, really, uh, who our finance committee, who our benevolence committee, who, you know, our uh, food pantry people on. It doesn't really matter any of those things. Uh, When they leave that building, there's one name that should be in their heart and in their mind that they know who it is and that they give honor and glory to, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we need to be doing. That should be our heart's desire. We ne- Because these people were doing things for their own honor, for their own glory, and God was saying, oh, would there be one among you that would just shut the doors? Just quit this. He said, you know, your incense and your offerings, they're not pleasing. They're, they're, a, they're a stench in my nostrils. He said, they're not pleasing. They're just something that, that uh, I don't even want. I'm not accepting. I, they're not coming uh, into my presence. And you know, at church, we need to be a people that obediently follow what the Lord would have us to follow and honor Him. He says, for from the rising of the sun... To, the, to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name and a, pure, and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, said the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted, and its fruit that it is, its foods may be despised. But you say, what a weariness this is, and you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick and this you bring as your offering shall i accept that from your hand says the lord you know when people go out and they profess to be christian and they do these things he said you profane my name to the world it's not honoring you know the the things that are going on in our denomination are profaning and we have an obligation to do the right thing the right way to bring honor and glory to the Lord, to show forth honor and glory to the Lord. You know, we need to call sin, sin. We need to live a a holy life, a righteous life. You know, I'm not going to say a perfect life because none of us are perfect. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we need to be one that seeks repentance, seeks forgiveness, seeks to walk in a holy manner that would bring honor and glory to the Lord. He's telling them, he said, all of these things you're doing, he said, then you say, what a weariness this is. And you snort at it and says, the Lord of hosts, you bring what has been taken by violence or lame or sick. He said, you're coming because you feel some obligation because it's a job. Uh, You come because it is... uh, uh, You know, people will talk if you don't come. You come not because you love the Lord, not because you desire to glorify Him, to honor Him, to praise Him, but you say it's a weariness. Church, it should never be a weariness. Uh, I read a a thing where D.L. Moody said one time, and he had he had been going from revival service to revival service, preaching and preaching and preaching, and and he came back through his home and. You know, was cleaning up and, and and packing again, and his family was trying to get him because physically he was exhausted. Uh, and they said, "You you need to, you know, aren't you weary? You need to take time off. You need to shut down some of these services and take some time off." And he says, "I get weary from the work, but I never get weary of the work." You know, think about that. He was saying, "My body gets tired. It does." He gets weary, he gets weak, he gets kind of run down, but my spirit never gets weary of it. I always have that hunger, that desire. And he said, Dwight Moody just kept right on going because he said, I never get weary of the work. Church, do we get weary of doing for the Lord? Do we get weary of the church uh, and of the things that God has called us to do? And then in verse 14, it says, Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it, Yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. He's telling us here, he said, cursed be that person. 
cursed be that one that has what it takes to make the correct offering, but holds it back for themselves. And when I read that, I thought of Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through five. And Paul was writing to Timothy, and he's talking about the last days and talking about how people will become. And when I read this, I thought it was describing them in the time of Malachi. It's describing us in the in the day today. But understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful unholy heartless unappeasable slanderous without self-control brutal not loving good treacherous reckless swollen with conceit lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having the appearance of godliness but denying its power, avoid such people. And as we study through the book of Malachi, we're going to see that so many of those things was happening then. And as we see and read and know in our world today, so many of those things are happening today. Church, we need to be that separated people. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. We need to be that people that... Uh, as God said, be thou holy as I am holy, for I am holy. Church, we need to walk in his. He said, for that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We need to walk in that spirit. We need to not allow this carnal body, this carnal self to control us. But we need to say, Lord, your Holy Spirit's what we need. Lord, let us give the sacrifice of the offerings, the gifts, honor you, not profane you. Lord, glorify you that you not be despised. The priests in that day, and I'm afraid so many, as I've said, so many in our churches, so many in our world, so many in us, the leaders in our churches today are, are living the lives of those priests in, in the book of Malachi. And not only are they living it, but one thing more that was happening there, they were allowing their members to do it because the priest's responsibility if I went to that priest and I had an unworthy sacrifice if I had a, a blind one if I had a let in a lame one if I had one with blemishes the priest was not to accept it was not to offer it it was not to be for that offering to the Lord but they were taking it because the people were corrupt the priests were corrupt in church, we don't need to be that, those corrupt people that allow ungodly things to happen in our church and, and just wink at them because they're good tithers or just wink at them because we love their family or just wink at them because we don't want to expose our own sin. Uh, church, we need to pray for our nation, pray for our churches, pray for uh, the men and the women on the pulpit committee that are, are prayerfully seeking the next pastor of Piney Level. You know, we need to pray for that man that God has already selected, that he is a godly man, uh, that he is a man that will be bold enough to stand and, and proclaim the gospel without fear, without prejudice. He'll, he'll be that one that can lead the church forward as God would have it to go. I ask you to pray for us. Pray for our nation. Pray for Stacy and the VBS group tomorrow night as they meet. Uh, and uh, if you want to be a volunteer and haven't yet volunteered, let Miss Stacy know. Uh, and uh, come out to church and be with us this Sunday. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be uh, gathering there and we'll be just praising God and worshiping the Lord. Uh, and uh, so join me as we pray tonight. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Father, thank you for providing all of our needs, Lord, we realize, Lord, that there's not anything, God, not anything uh, that we should ever withhold from you, Lord, God, that you own it all, that, God, everything that we have is yours, and, Lord, our life, our breath, God, our home, our family, everything that we have, Lord, is a gift from you, Lord, and we know that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, and we praise you for that. God, I pray that you would just help us as a church to be those people that would bring honor and glory to you, God, that people would never look at us and say that we have profaned the name of the Lord, 
that we uh, never look at us, Lord, and despise your holy name. But, Father, when they would look at the people, uh, God, that they would glorify you and bring honor and glory to you. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And all this we'd ask in Christ's name. Amen. Love you, church. God bless you. Just uh, come on out and be with us on Sunday. Let us know if we can help you in any way.